What are we doing? My name is Ricky Rick. I'm a rapper, musician, producer, a swagger. A swagger is someone who's gonna like walk in the building and everyone's gonna pull out their phones and start taking pictures. You check. You the guy who's coming through, coming with a different combo, you know? And the heads just explode. Pretty much all around nice guy, a family man, you know, father of Mike, father of Jordan, the hubby to Bianca, <laughs> father of the streets. I'm just operating. <laughs> I could say a hundred things, but I only say one. These are my flavors. Pretty much, I'm gonna run you down my top flavors. For me, my flavors are something that's a bit more sensorial. You gotta look up that word if you don't know what it means. Okay. Is it a real word? Sensorial. All right, so here we go. For my first flavor, I'm pretty much coming with the OG, what started this whole thing. Some of you might be a bit confused, but the OGs know what I'm talking about. Can you put some music like uh, um, like those angel sounds like ah. Yeah, like that. This is what started my love for music. I wouldn't be in the music game, I wouldn't be in the music industry if it wasn't for this piece right here. You see, I used to watch these videos on YouTube and all I used to see was guys like Jay Dilla and Mad Lib chopping up beats. And they were chopping up beats on machines that looked something like this. And when I was coming up, everyone was making beats on computers, but I never had a computer that was strong enough to create what I wanted to create. So I made it a mission, a mission to find this machine right here. And my mom Dukes actually got this for me. And this is what started everything, you know. My first beats were made on this machine. It's a bit different from what the kids do today because the kids now, everyone's got a laptop and you got all the sounds and everything in there. But with this machine, what you had to do was get your records and it was like big vinyls. And we used to get the records and import them into here, but just by sound, but you couldn't see the actual wave. And then you put a sound in each pad. And unfortunately this doesn't work right now, otherwise I'll give you a demo. I wish it worked, but it just doesn't, so. So everywhere I go, people keep asking me, yo, what's happening with the beard? Why is your beard so smooth? Who does your beard? What products do you use? The only thing I'm doing is that I'm actually grooming myself. Pretty much this is like the legendary clipper. Everywhere you go, you're gonna find this clipper, whether you're in the hood, whether you're in Santin, whether you're in Paris, whether you can go to Miami, you're gonna find this clipper. And then when I wanna do the line, I come with this one. Then when my line is sorted and I feel like everything's fine, I'm gonna pull out the bomb patrol. I see a lot of you guys are coming with the bumps on the face. You're getting embarrassed when you're leaving the crib. I've got a solution for you. Just get the bomb patrol. Don't worry about these 200 Rand products. If it doesn't burn, you'll never learn. When my beard is long, I'm coming with the comb. But when my beard is short the way it is right now, I'm coming with the brush. You gotta keep brushing the beard. So it's gonna lay down. Look at my beard like now. My beard looks like Italian. I look like those Italian stallions from Sicily. Oh. Yeah, everyone wants to know the story behind this piece. So I thought, let me put it out right here. We've got the platform. Let me tell the story. Now this right here. <laughs> We're coming through with the fur. <laughs> now this piece right here, it makes me like, smile and just reminisce on the days that the first check, big check that I got, I always told myself the thing I was gonna do was I was gonna buy myself a fur coat because all my favorite rappers used to rock fur coats. Not knowing this was gonna be the biggest waste of money of my life. People always ask me how much I spent on this piece right here. I don't know if I should say it in public, but ah, whatever, we're on flavors, so I'm gonna give you the scoop. So this here set me back about 250,000 at the time. It's ridiculous, ridiculous. Some people only figured out who Ricky Rick was because of this jacket, so maybe the 250 was worth it. But if it was today, I would never do it again. So I keep this in my house to remind me, never ever blow that much money on a piece of, of gear. Next flavor. Right about now, I'm gonna show you some extreme flavors. 
A lot of people don't believe in what I'm about to do, but I'm gonna give you guys the inside scoop because I love you, because I'm your bigger brother. This is the reason why your boy always smelling fresh. These are my top five fragrances. I'll even call it perfume. You know when I was growing up, people used to say perfume was for girls. Girls wear perfume, men wear cologne. Nah, we don't wear cologne, we wear perfume. These are all perfumes right here. This one right here is um, deep, 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 uh, deep. This one right here is the Dear Polly. Now this one is very dangerous. If you wear it when the sun is shining, this is very dangerous. This can cause a lot of problems. Some people will say this is like a girl's perfume, but what I realized is actually not about girl or boy, it's actually about what you enjoy. So this right here switched me from wearing like hard, you know, strong smelling scents to just focusing on only sweet smells. So all my perfumes are sweet smells. Like why do you want to smell like a cigar walking into the club? Nah, because everyone's smoking, people are spilling alcohol on the couches. You don't want to smell like a cigar. You want to smell sweet like some flowers, like some roses, you know, like some tulips. This right chair was a gift for my girl. I tried it one day and I stepped out with this one and I was wearing a vest. I was coming with the DMX look. I stepped out the building and I was rocking this one. <laughs> And trust me, you don't want to know what happened. This one right here. <laughs> now this fragrance right here, we're talking about flavors. I see we're coming with the cherries. We're coming with all sorts of flavors with the gum over here. But this here, this smells like chocolate. So if you ever walk into a building and you just smell some chocolates, but you don't see any confectionaries or anything like that, just know I was there. Now, in my old days, I was gonna come on this show and show you a bunch of sneakers or a bunch of clothes, but I couldn't do that because life is about different flavors, it's about different vibes. But I'm gonna show you one pair of sneakers that changed my life. This is the only pair of sneakers that mean anything to me. I can give away 100 sneakers, give away 200 sneakers. Those don't matter to me, nothing matters to me. But these sneakers right here is the most important sneakers in my life and my favorite sneakers of all time. Every time these shoes come out, you guys know it's always a crazy drop, but I never bought any of the new retros that came out. These shoes are important to me and I've never cleaned them either. I've just kept them dirty the way that they have to be. I've kept them like that. Obviously the laces were messed up. I had to change the laces, but I've kept them the same dirt. I've never cleaned them because that's how much they mean to me. And I still wear them every day, just like this. For me having these, it just gives me the feeling that I actually managed to get a little piece of my childhood back. So these shoes are very important to me. Jordan 1's my favorite shoe of all time. I'm always gonna have these shoes. So this shoe is almost like, uh, almost 10 years old right now for me. And I'm gonna keep wearing them and they still smell good. <clears throat> Pretty much right about now, I'm gonna show you the most important piece of my life. Uh, it's gonna come in two parts. The first one is this joint right here, you know? I, I went to a school called Hilton College. I had never been really grateful for anything that I got in there while I was there because it was so tough being at boarding school. The last day that we were at the school, they said, yo, you guys have to go to church. And at boarding school, you had to go to church every two days, you had to go to church. And we hated it, we hated it. And this one was a day where they called us into church, but it wasn't a full service, it was just uh, a prayer where they gave us this Bible right here. I remember thinking, I'm never gonna need this again, you know? And I just stashed it in a box, I put it away. Like a few uh, months later, uh, my father had passed away. Not even a few months later, like a couple of weeks later, actually. And the first thing I did when my father passed away, I went and grabbed this Bible. This was the first thing that I saw. I pulled it out and, 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 and I, I wrote, I wrote, you know, the day he was born and the day he died inside the Bible, you know. And uh, ever since then, this Bible's been with me and whenever I'm going through a hard time, I always come back to the book. This is one of the most important things to me. Most importantly, you know, I need to give a shout out to my, my high school that gave it to me because I, I really didn't appreciate it when they gave it to me at the time. And, uh, and, and now it's something, the only thing that I keep from school. I don't even know where my certificates is, none of that stuff but I always know where the Bible is. So thank you, thank you for the Bible. And then on that note, another one is, before I was making it in hip hop, and before I actually could kick off my career, thinking life is not gonna work out for me, 
my mother called all of her friends over to the house and uh, they prayed for me and they gave me this rock. And uh, you know, you know in life like you can have like all the things, like all the fly and you can have like all the dope that people want. But it's so crazy, like this small rock is like the only thing I actually really value because they put their prayers in here and they told me things are gonna be okay and things ended up being okay. This small little rock right here. So this is like my good luck charm, you know? She didn't think I had it. The other day I showed her this and she didn't think I still had it. And I showed her, I said, Ma, do you remember when you guys prayed for me and told me I'm gonna make it and you gave me this rock? And she said, yeah, what happened to that rock? And I pulled it out and there it is right here. So yeah, this is your boy Ricky Rick and these were my flavors. I just said, you know, you made it in life where you can walk around the streets chewing gum like this. And no one says anything. <laughs>